What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Fedi. I'm a fifth year medical student at St. Petersburg State Pediatric Medical University. And today we're going to talk about how we were able to finally cure uh, beta thalassemia with viral gene therapy. And for those who don't know, but beta thalassemia is one of the most severe cases of anemia. So this is gonna be really interesting. But before doing that, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest breakthroughs in medicine. I post here uh, regularly. I'm going to talk about beta thalassemia in just a second. But before doing that, I want you to be familiar with the concept of gene engineering because since its introduction in 1989, this novel technology has enabled us to literally change sequences of our DNA in order to cure some genetic diseases that we never thought we'd be able to cure one day. And we were able to do that through various methods, one of which is CRISPR. Uh, you may have heard of it. It's actually the most famous one, I think. But there's also other methods uh, like viral gene engineering that just got FDA approved to uh, deliver the DNA sequence in order to cure beta thalassemia recently. So what we do is we take a virus, uh, we strip it of its infectious and harmful parts and capacities. Uh, we use that virus as an envelope to deliver a message. That message is usually a DNA sequence that was uh, pre-engineered in a laboratory. We take that mix we re-inject it into the patient and observe and hopefully we will see that the pathology is slowly going away. Um, why viruses? Well, uh, viruses are usually good at sneaking, they're good at hiding from our immune system, and um, usually viruses are good at penetrating our body cells and delivering their content into the nucleus. So this is why we chose viruses, not bacteria or parasites. Now, what do we know about beta thalassemia? Well, we know that it's basically a type of anemia. Uh, anemia is the medical term for a low hemoglobin count in your blood. Uh, hemoglobin or hemoglobin, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, is the main protein in your red blood cells that is responsible for delivering and carrying oxygen to your body tissue. You have low hemoglobin, you start to develop some anemia symptoms like cold extremities, um, you would start to feel way more fatigue than you usually do, your skin would start to become pale. Uh, all of these are symptoms of anemia. We also know that beta thalassemia can be classified into different classes or groups uh, based on the severity of the symptoms the patient undergoes. Because not everyone that has the beta thalassemia gene has the same symptoms or the same severity. So that's a pretty important one. Uh, different people, different symptoms intensity. Thirdly, since it's a genetic disorder, symptoms usually start to occur at a young age, usually around 6 to 12 months. But if those symptoms are not carefully and quickly treated at that age, it can even lead to some growth retardation in infants. And lastly, we know that in addition to all of these symptoms, all of these are anemia symptoms, in addition to all of these, uh, the process of degradation of the red blood cells, the actual process that's known as hemolysis in medical terms, uh, leaves us with a high count of bilirubin and a high count of iron circulating in your blood. A high count of bilirubin gives us jaundice and uh, a high count of iron gives us a more complicated condition uh, called hematochromatosis, secondary hematochromatosis because it's not genetic, it's actually uh, a result of another condition. So the iron would start to build up in your tissues uh, at first and then eventually in your organs. Uh, it would start to interfere with their function, 
uh, it can lead to cardiac arrhythmias, hepatic cirrhosis, uh, your liver basically dies, and diabetes. So by now it should be obvious to you that this condition is pretty serious and should be addressed and treated as soon as possible. Uh, actually in some countries, in my country for example in Tunisia, uh, we do something called pre-marriage testing. We do this genetic test where we see if they have the uh, beta thalassemia gene. And if they do, we highly advise against their marriage. And uh, I think it should be uh, a more common procedure in other countries. But that takes us to the cure uh, that we're going to talk about. This cure that's called Zintiglo, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a one-time therapy product administered as a single dose. I won't get into the details of the procedure itself as it's pretty complicated. But basically what will happen is they will harvest some of your hematopoietic stem cells and uh, they will re-engineer those stem cells in the lab and then re-inject them with the help of this virus uh, into your body. You will also receive chemotherapy so you should be ready for that. But it's a really cheap cost in order to get rid of that lifestyle. Uh, those patients uh, that have severe beta thalassemia have to undergo. I mean, these people have to undergo regular, constant transfusions, uh, and these and these things aren't easy, you know, guys. The primary goal uh, that was put by the authors in order to evaluate the efficacy of this drug, uh, sorry, this cure, uh, is what they called transfusion independence, and believe it or not. 89% of the patients that enrolled in this study have achieved uh, transfusion independence with pretty minor side effects as well, uh, like um, neutropenia, fever, uh, hair loss, constipation, nausea, vomiting, and some other adverse events that are shown in this table. It's also so important to mention that a theoretical risk of a blood malignancy is present, but no cases have been reported in the two phase three clinical trials. So that's pretty much it guys. If you made it this far into the video, please make sure to press the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Stay safe.